So now that we have that backdrop, we're going to get more insights on the status of the EU crisis. Joining us is Daniel Hansen, researcher with the American Enterprise Institute. Daniel, let's begin with what's happened in Brussels. Uh, there's this framework there, but uh, you see this as interesting. I do as well. Uh, German Chancellor Merkel and French President Hollande kind of at a loggerheads before we heard this breakthrough. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, this is really the first time that we've seen a crack develop in the Franco-German alliance when it comes to combating the EU crisis. What we've seen to this point is a pretty united front. You know, Merkel and Sarkozy were, were really on the same page as far as this sort of austerity for bailout type uh, situation that we see in Europe. Hollande is very much against the, the austerity for bailouts. He's seen the, the growth problems that are happening all across southern Europe and saying, look, until we can get banks under control, get banks recapitalized, and get these countries growing again, we're just not going to be able to get ahead of the debt crisis. Well, there are no easy solutions either, and, and this, uh, this agreement actually opens up a, ho a whole new set of worms in that uh, the treaties are going to have to be redone, correct? Well, that's right. I mean, the biggest issue is that there's a bunch of non-Eurozone states that are going to be subjecting their banks to the authority of the European Central Bank, where they have no voting voice. And so, you know, a country like Sweden or Poland um, doesn't want to have its banks subjected to German influence if they don't get to also vote like Germany gets to vote on the board. And of course, the Germans are upset because they don't want to be uh, providing depository insurance for the rest of Europe because their banks are sound and everybody else's banks are not sound. One of the things that Merkel really wants is the EU, EU to have the power to veto member states' budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, she says this, as you saw the, the video from uh, Greece, there's talk next month of even a wider protest in Spain, Portugal, as well as Greece. Um, so I wouldn't think that would go over well in some of these countries. No, and these, these governments in Southern Europe are really on borrowed time. They have historically low uh, approval ratings. They have people rioting in the streets, uh, you know, alarming ri uh, rises in things like suicide rates and depression rates and people being treated for, you know, attempted suicides and things like that. Um, because their, their unemployment rates are, you know, for some countries, 26%, 54% for youth unemployment in a place like uh, Greece. And this is just unsustainable. These governments are on borrowed time, and this continuing to offer austerity to Brussels isn't working for them. Do you see any glimmers of hope? I mean, Spain's uh, bond yields came down. Uh, some people are saying, well, that's a, kind of a good sign, and yet they're, they're still struggling. There's no doubt about that. Well, the question is whether or not the European Central Bank is going to be able to uh, put enough cash towards these cash-strapped countries to make their financial situation viable. And what we've seen so far is a growing sentiment against that sort of intervention from a place like Germany or the Netherlands, who really have you know, sound finances and don't want uh, inflation to pick up in their countries just because these other countries in the South have been profligate spenders. So Mario Draghi has shown an insistence that he's going to do whatever it takes, but we'll see if he actually can do it when push comes to shove. Politics has always evolved in everything, and we're here right now in the United States in the midst of an election, and we see mm -hmm. people talking to a domestic audience. Merkel obviously has to think about her domestic audience mm -hmm. at, one, uh, at one point as well. Talk to me about that, too, and how that all enters into all of this. Well, Merkel stands for re-election in the fall, and what she's seeing is that her party got killed in regional elections last spring. And she still is very popular. You know, she has the most, she has the highest approval rating of any European leader within her country. But in nine months, in ten months, when she's you know in the thick of an electoral contest, that could be very different if she takes a misstep and really concedes too much German sovereignty uh, to the European Commission. So she's really trying to toe this fine line between getting growth going in Europe again and not ticking off her electorate. We saw British Prime Minister uh, David Cameron uh, talking there. He obviously pleased that he's not involved in this, and yet they still are impacted by all of this as well. Well, that, that's right. I mean, Great Britain is retreating from Europe right now. They're really trying to pull back their, their financial integration. London is the most uh, influential and important financial sector in Europe by far, and the British really don't want to screw that up by ceding some of that sovereignty to, to Brussels, which has shown an inability to regulate their banks to this point anyway. Okay, you're, you're a watcher all of, the, of all of this. Uh, what are you looking for going forward? Well, really, the question is, uh, can they get growth going in Europe again? And right? the answer is? <laughs> well, the IMF seems to think it's going to happen, but when you ask them about their forecasts, they're really based on just sort of hope that at some point growth is going to restart because it's been so negative for so long. But I don't see it coming. Uh, hope and change. We've heard that here in the United States. And I guess, uh, so, it, the, the, and the other thing I want to get at, and quickly, we only have about 20 seconds, how many meetings can you have before you, you can finally come up with some kind of solution? That's another problem, too, isn't right. it? Right. I mean, the European Union has done a terrible job managing expectations, and they have meeting after meeting after meeting, and markets walk away 
being dissatisfied. I mean, it took them about five hours to reject the last bailout package that they passed in July, right? And so we'll see what happens. All right, Daniel Hansen, thanks so much.